The Bible is full of moments in which God is asking human beings to praise him. And the Bible is full of places in which human beings do praise Jesus or God the Father or the Holy Spirit. But how about a moment when God praises a human being? How would that look like? Yes, my friends, that actually happened. That is a real story. We're going to read about it in Matthew chapter 11, verses 7 through 11. So here's what it says. Jesus was by the Jordan River talking to the multitude. And then all of a sudden, the disciples of John the Baptist come to him with a strange question. After an entire day of holding, waiting, Jesus actually replies to these folks and they go back to their uh, master in prison, right? And they take to him the news about all that Jesus had done that day. But when they return, Jesus decides to talk to the multitude about John the Baptist. Let's read in John chap in Matthew chapter 11 verses um, ten, 7 and 9. Let's go. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind. But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Oh, that would have looked really awkward. Jesus, the one who is worthy of all the praise and honor in the entire universe, now praising a human being. But it actually happened. Jesus was praising John the Baptist. And I want to point out a couple of things uh, John the Baptist is praised for. First of all, the Bible tells me that Jesus is um, describing John the Baptist as somebody who's firm firm, firm, very valiant. You know, the, the tall reeds that grew besides the Jordan were bending before every breeze. You know, the wind will blow this way, the, the, the reeds will go this way. The winds will blow that way, then the, 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 the reeds will, will, will bend that way. And that was such a beautiful example of the rabbis who stood as critics of John the Baptist and his mission, yet they were not able to, to stand for the truth. Now, John the Baptist was so different and Jesus mentioned it to the multitude. The first characteristic of uh, John the Baptist was that he was bold, he was sincere, he was fearless. He was not, he was not really a person of, uh, shakeable character. He was a very good and firm person, and Jesus talked about it. The word read is also used in, um, in the English language to talk about uh, a weak or impressionable person. Oh, John the Baptist was no weak person at all. John the Baptist was a very bold person, and that was the first characteristic that Jesus pointed out about John the Baptist. Now, there's a second thing that Jesus talks about when he explains or describes who John the Baptist was. So the second, the second thing was John's humbleness. Jesus says, for instance, in, in, um, in verse uh, 8, 
Why did you go out to see a man clothed in soft garments? No, John the Baptist, uh, even his garments were so plain, so simple. His humbleness. John the Baptist was described was described as a prophet. Yeah, yes, he was also described as more than a prophet. And Jesus said, that's probably the most striking thing of all that Jesus says here. And verse 11, assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Oh, that, those are big words about a human being, especially when they come from Jesus Christ. Now, how would it look like if Jesus said something about me? How would it look like if Jesus said something about you? Would it be something that nice? I don't think so. My life is not, is not really that pure, that bold, that humble. My, my life is full of mistakes. And I have to understand, I have to realize, and I have to recognize that my life is full of issues, full of sin, full of trouble. Yet the Lord does not look at me with eyes of looking for mistakes and that kind of thing. Jesus looks at me with eyes of love. He looks at me like this is my beloved son, even if he's imperfect. So please, don't wait until you're perfect, blameless, or shameless, sinless, spotless. Don't wait until you get to that point before giving your heart to Jesus. Just go ahead and surrender your life to him right now. All that Jesus wants from you is for you to give him your heart, and he will do the rest. As soon as I'm done... Uh, streaming this thing, I am going to write a message here in the comments below. I'm going to write, Jesus, I give you my heart. Jesus, I give you my heart. There is nothing else that Jesus wants from you. He wants your heart. Yes, your sinful heart. He wants your heart. Yes, your weak heart. He wants your heart because he wants to give you the gift of salvation. God bless you.